the Lord say, I will do it. Forget about negative things. You will do it. There are lots of things that you will discover a time is going to come, it will turn to hold fashion. So now, the more you mention the name of devil, the more the devil rejoices over that matter. A man of big thing is the one that rules the world. It's in the mind. It might not be working now. Don't stop what you are doing that you know is the best. But all you need to do, don't ever look at yourself as a slave. The mind of a slave is to serve the one that purchased them. Can you tell yourself, say, I'm freely indeed. Because the word of the Lord says, I am free. Say so, therefore, I am free. In the name of Jesus. Can somebody announce to like five peasants say we are free in the name of Jesus? Because the word of the Lord is saying we are free. So therefore, we are free. Announce to five persons, say I am free. In the name of Jesus. Free by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I want to welcome everyone this morning to our month of moving forward. Can you clap your hands unto the Lord? And I'm saying, Happy New Month in the name of Jesus. The word of the Lord in the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, verse 1, is our anchor. That says, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Tell somebody, say, I arise, I arise. and I shine, I shine. Because, my because my light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Can somebody say arise? Can you shout it with your louder voice? Say arise. And I shine in the name of Jesus. Say the glory of the Lord is risen upon my life. Can you shout out the amen? I gave an assignment to all this month. That when you say happy new month to anybody, you tell them move forward. Hallelujah. You are going to be a prophet to somebody this month. And God is going to make all things work in your life. Tell somebody, say move forward. Move forward. Ladies and gentlemen, let your voice be louder. Say move forward. move forward. In the name of Jesus. Tell another man, say move forward. Move forward. In the name of Jesus. Tell another person, say move forward. Move forward. In the name of Jesus. Can your amen be louder? Amen. By the grace of God, in the book of Exodus chapter 14, verses 15 to 16. Exodus 14, verse 15 to 16. The Lord particularly informed and instructed and, and led uh, Moses to understand and said to him, Why are you crying unto me? Speak to these people to go forward. So I pray for somebody today. Anointing that will make you to go forward. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hear this. When the Israelites got to the place of the sea, they were confused. So in the journey of life, there might be a particular realm you will get to. There might be the realm of confusion. But that is not supposed to be a time for you to be static. It's going to be the time of moving forward. Say, I'm moving forward. Say, I'm moving forward. In the name of Jesus, say, I am moving forward by the power of the Holy Ghost. Can somebody shout out, Amen? Amen. Verse 16 said, But lift thou up thy rod. During our hair of comfort, I said that everybody should stretch their index finger, isn't it? This is prophetic. It's converted to your rod. Say, lift it up. Can you stretch forth your index finger? I pray in the name of Jesus that the power of the Holy Ghost will come upon your index finger. In the name of Jesus. From today, henceforth, the sun into the road of safety, road of security. It's turning to road of abundance. It's taking away failure from your path. It's coming against everything that is not of God. Hear this through your rod, you will not pursue enemy this month. 
In the name of Jesus, through this rod, anything you lay your hands on will work for you. Can you declare, say, by my rod? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, can you declare, say, by my rod? I prophetically declare that by the power of the Holy Ghost, there will be no road closed. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, can you say, there will be no road closed for me this month? In the name of Jesus. Say there will be no failure on my path this month. In the name of Jesus. Say every red sea will dry up for me to move on a dry ground. In the name of Jesus. Say by this rod, I declare. In the name of Jesus. I enter into the troop and I overcome. Because the word of the Lord is saying. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Say so, therefore, I'm a great man. Can you clap your hands unto the Lord and claim this word? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I want you to understand that the word you hear determines how far you go. The Lord said to them, say, go ahead. Do not allow the rest sea to hold you back. I speak to somebody authoritatively this month. Go ahead. Oh my God. I said go ahead. Okay, if you don't take it right, I move ahead. In the name of Jesus, I cross to my next level. In the name of Jesus, I am moving forward. In the name of Jesus, as you are taking the action, begin to declare. I am moving forward in my office. I move forward in my environment. Anywhere I go, I see the rights of God upon my life. Say no failure, no failure. Anything that stopped me before will no longer stop me. Can you shout hallelujah? I want you to point to like three persons say move forward. Now the assignment say move forward. Shout it say move forward. Uh -huh. Say it very loud say move forward. In the name of Jesus, say move forward. By the right of God, say move forward. By the power of the Holy Ghost, say I'm moving forward. In the name of Jesus, say I'm moving forward. No more backwardness in the order of my life. In the name of Jesus, come shout, I receive grace. So move forward. Oh my God, say I dispense grace. So move forward. Say no more backwardness. Say no more agony and shout, say no more pain. Oh, if you love to move forward, say no more pain. Say the rest part for my sake. In the name of Jesus, say rest part for my sake. And the right of God is seen upon my life. Can you shout, I receive it. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the Holy Ghost. I'm saying good morning to you and happy new month of moving forward. I pray for somebody this morning. Grace for you to move forward is released. Do you know when the Lord said to Israel, I through Moses, that the Israelites should move forward, some of them still look down and say, how can we move? We have been on this journey of slavery for so many years. As a matter of fact, we are comfortable being a slave. We are comfortable being a slave. And you know, when they saw the Red Sea, they said to Moses, Is it because there is no grave in Egypt that you brought us here? It is better for us to eat cucumber. It is better for us to eat. They started talking about the food that is not taking them anywhere. And this has been the level of so many people. They don't think beyond their environment. But I pray for somebody today. Anointing for you to move forward, receive it in the name of Jesus. From today, I want you to understand, in any level you find yourself, you will discover that there is no movement. You are not supposed to be static. Hello? All you need when you discover there is no more movement is to ask for another level. Hear this. To any situation you find yourself, that thing seems so hard for you. It's not for you to retire. It's for you to start again. Tell somebody, say, go ahead. Go ahead. Come on, say, go ahead. Go ahead. Don't, stop. Don't stop. 
By the grace of God, I will go ahead today with the law of creative thinkers or positive thinkers, part four. Can we clap our hands unto the Lord? <laughs> Hallelujah. Father, have your way and speak your word through me. Touch your children and life, let life be given and be released. Amen. Jesus' name we pray. Can the hymn be louder? Amen. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 25. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 25. This word is there to give us something great. I want to honor everybody in this meeting today because you are in the place of achievement and God is going to give you the right to need a name. Can I hear you shout out a hymn to that? Yeah. I want us to read these scriptures together. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 25. Can we read it together very loud, sound and clear? One to go. The hands are a people not strong. Yet... They prepare their meat in the summer. Who understands the word hand? How many of us know hand? How many of us understand hand? Those things that you can, you can just match with your feet in your house. You understand that? But here it is. The word of the Lord says that the ants are people not strong. They are not strong and they prepare their meat in summer. You can see hands and you can use your hands or your slippers to keep hands. Do you believe that? But do you know that you have total right to learn from them? The wise men in the Bible they said, we shall learn through hands. We shall learn through them. So this is exactly what God wanted to learn today. Now, last time I talked about the borrowed identity and uh, the re-identity. How many of us understand that? I'm going to be talking about the example of borrowed identity with you working with an organization. When a man works with an organization, you make use of their fame, you make use of their name, you make use of their personality, you make use of the weapon of their strength to build your real identity, isn't it? For every man, there will be grace suddenly you have learned from a great man. Or you even learn from somebody that is not there at all. One thing that make any man you see around do to be great in life is not to underrate any man that they see around them. So any man you see, there is something on their inside that can be a blessing to you. Even those one you call a non-entity, there can be some things you can drop prayer points from them and you can ask something that will not be like this, you've learned. In a place where you are borrowing identity, we talk about borrowing identity, you must be attentive to learn on how to build your own personal identity and your authentic identity. You must learn their strengths. You must understand their weakness. You must understand their eagerness to what they are doing that is making them whom they are. And yet it is until you know and until you see that you're working with that organization is to so train your mind. You might not get anything right. A lot of people will be working with an organization still thinking that, oh, I'm being paid salary for my service. No. As a matter of fact, you have been paying for the training they are training you. Any man that is so sensitive and sensible in a place where you are learning, take it as a work of training. And this is the reason you must not work any work. Don't engage yourself in any hour work. Here it is. You must do something that can add to your future, something that can add to your generation, something that is going to bring you out from now to your after now, and it's going to give you something. Here it is. A lot of people will be thinking that, oh, as I'm there, they are cheating me. If it's something you believe in, you have to understand there is no cheating. As a matter of fact, you are the one cheating them. Because they are paying you for the experience you are gathering from them. Show me any man that is doing something today that you don't learn it from somewhere. 
Show me any graduate that what is practicing now is exactly the way that person is being taught in class. Show me that graduate. If you have not learned it somewhere, you might not get it right. If you sit put or you step put to what we are taught in your class, you will discover that you will not grow in life. Hallelujah. So this is an area where everybody must sit down and think. You have to have a way of thinking. And all you need to know, you don't need to look down on yourself. I'm in this place. I'm going out of this place with something. A lot of people, when little things happen in the place where you are working, I want to leave. I want to leave. Stay there. They don't achieve anything. Any man that is not patient can never receive blessing. Either from God or from man. Take it. Any man that is not patient will just be there doing nothing. And thinking that it's doing anything. A lot of people, I think in our school of ministry, I was talking about Moses in the call of God, that Moses started the ministry when he was not called into ministry. So some of the students that attended the school of ministry then, he started this ministry, God wanted to make use of him to deliver the Israelites, but he was so passionate to rush into it. He killed somebody and ran away. And God is still bringing him back because his assignment is still in that place. There are lots of people in the organization where you worked before many years ago. If your assignment is not yet expired in that place, God will be directing you to that place. But a lot of people say, it believes to me. You have to check. Learn from the hands. There is no house that you will not see ants. Is somebody listening to me? Let's talk about one rich man in Nigeria that have flower business. He has uh, a lot of business. He do sugar. He do salt and so many other things. His product is in every house. You make use of it. But you know the man. I don't want to mention his name. But have you been able to see him face to face? If you have seen him face to face, have you been able to sit side by side with him? No. But because of his positive thinking, he never looked that salt is too below the standard. He knows that this is a commodity that everybody must take in. Is somebody listening to me? If anybody say, oh, to eat salt is bad, I want to tell you, that man, because of creative ability, we do another thing that is, if we just neglect the source and swap. Every man with creative ability will always learn to swap. You must know when to pursue and when to retreat. You must understand when to stand and when not to go there. You must understand what to do in the time of doing it, how not to do it, and how to do it. You must understand now it is the time, and now it's not the time. This is the way of anyone that thinks in a positive manner. Say, I'm going to think right from today. Can you shout it very loud? Somebody is not shouting. Say, I'm going to think right from today. Shout out a amen to that. Now, putting into action, that is the re-identity. The re-identity is putting into action all you have gathered through your personal or corporate learning process by turning into stardom. Everything you have learned at that time, then it will generate for you your re-identity. Let me start from somewhere. The cloth you put on today was manufactured by a company that your fashion or your creative uh, person that designed your cloth didn't know where that company is located, isn't it? Now, the machine that is used in that place, that machine was actually came from somewhere that the one that is making use of that machine didn't know the location. Am I speaking to somebody? The place where those things were formed together might not necessarily belong to you. Isn't it? But you will understand that the time is going to come that all this thing, both the cloth that was imported from somewhere and the location where that is done and this is a place where this is done, we come together to form something. Is somebody hearing me right now? So before you know it, it's going to form like suits. It's going to make you look neat. It's going to make you look well. But the cloth you put on is not you. 
As a matter of fact, it's not your identity. Your identity is what you carry and whom you are. And what you have been able to learn. Former President Obasanjo Joe quotes, and I quote, Say if you do not see what you should see, you will then be a victim of what you don't like. Number two, says, when you see what you should see, you do what you should do, it is then you can put away what you don't like. Then I had this to it. Seeking to achieve something when you have done nothing will only generate vanity of mind breaking for you. You are seeking to achieve something and you have not generated anything. Hello, it can work. Now, I'm here for this presentation to minister to you. If I didn't have all of this material done, I would just come here and begin to blab, isn't it? And what will be on your inside, let pastor finish with what he's doing and let pastor go. We are not blessed today. So the planning in mind is the planting of the greater value that you want to harvest later. Until when you understand this, it might not work out. One of the acts of the ministry training by Obasanjo was never reinforce failure. Never do what? Never reinforce failure. Any failure that you will reinforce is going to generate failure acts. Failure movement. Failed strategy. Failed motion. Failed enthusiasm towards something. And you just describe, we're so eager about failed things. Because of what? That person is failed in mind. Authority is not a function of age. It's a function of whom you are. You have to know whom you are. You have to understand that I'm bigger than this. And here it is. There is one thing for you to be caught in the scripture of I'm bigger than this, I'm bigger than this, and you still remain static. Because you only think you don't move. Any thinking in your heart without motion will weigh you down in the hand. I said something. Every doctor started from kindergarten school, isn't it? Every lawyer starts from somewhere. If you want to be a married man, you must first be a single. If you want to be a woman, uh, uh, a fruitful woman, a, a woman that you want to have children, you must first be a woman that has the physique of every woman around you. Glory be to God. Exploit is not a function of title, but a function of entitlement. We need to get this. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 3. I'm reading from NLT. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 3 says, This vision is for a future time. It's described the end and it will be fulfilled. If it seems slow in coming, wait patiently for it. Surely, it will surely take place. It will not delay. Anything around us, there is a timetable for it. Timetable for you to become what God is saying you should be. Timetable for you to get to the realm of greatness. Timetable for you to make things work the way it should. In the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 13, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 13 says, A straight path for your feet. Liz that which is lame be turned out of the way. But let it rather be healed. I will explain. I put some things down here that will bless you. The Bible phrase can be linked to many areas of life. But I will only be using one area here. Now I say. Let everything you do or you are doing be of a good standard. So that the people you refer to as nobody will not overtake you and leave you behind. Why you now become a nobody? That's that scripture. Why is it? I may stretch your feet, the feet of your path. So the name will not turn out of the way. and rather be healed. But you that you are there, you will be thinking, oh, I'm up there. Oh, I'm this there. That one is the one down there. If you don't walk toward your hand, what you have, 
nothing will happen. Looking good is okay, and dressing well is good. But what is the point of dressing well? Wearing expensive clothes and expensive shoes, spray expensive perfume, without having intelligence, without having wisdom, without having skill, to liberate you as a wearer of those things. A lot of people want to look so good. They want to put on the good path. Want everything. God is good. Yes, God is good. And, oh, yes. People will only compliment you for what you put on. But a lot of people, what they put on is what is controlling their mind. I put on clothes today. It's 33 million. Hello. It's a wasted product. You only use any clothes you put on to cover your nakedness. But they do not cover the dirtiness of mind. <laughs> Is somebody hearing something? Your expensive outfit will not give you any other thing than for people to greet you. So many people don't regard those things you put on because of what comes out of your mouth. What you put on don't matter. But what comes out of your mouth is what matters most. You can sit with the kings and the nobles. You can think for them. Your name might not come out now for what you are doing. But sooner or later, because you are brain behind something, when that thing is speaking, your name will be mentioned. And there is going to be a time that they will call you because the one you wrote those articles for will not be able to read it. And you know what is going to happen? They will need your attention to come and address the public. And before you know it, your name is coming somewhere. A man from nowhere to somewhere. Why? Because he is able to make use of something from his inside. Nobody cares about what drives you anymore or what you drive anymore. Everybody cares about what drives you, not what you drive. There is a reason you see your car, man. Talking to somebody that is riding on a vehicle worth of 30 million and say, idiot, go and die for house. As a matter of fact, one, one bolt that is attached to the tire of that vehicle can buy those Okada, the whole Okada. But I will tell you, now, they, nobody cares about what you are driving. Every man you see around cares about what drives you. What comes out of your mouth? How do you think about what you are thinking? Hello? If you are not too careful, life is leaving a lot of people behind. And people you don't count will overtake and they will begin to rule over you. Here it is. We are in a era where everybody wants prophecy to do it for them. One prophecy, prophecy to write exam for you. Prophecy to give you money. One prophecy to lay blocks upon all another one and begin to plaster it. We need prophecy to put uh, roof, roofing sheet on it. As a matter of how you want prophecy to push you on your feet. You want prophecy to do everything. It doesn't work that way. If it works that way, you will discover that a lot of us will have built mansion here. Because of a lot of, and the accumulation of prophecies. Is it not true? Receive grace in the name of Jesus. The child will say what? Yeah. You are going to be rich tomorrow in the name of Jesus. The child will say what? Yeah. Money will come to your pocket by this time tomorrow. You begin to count million. They will jump up. Million don't come that way. Amen. What can I gain from you apart from you complimenting my outfit? What can I gain from you? Oh, you look nice today, and so what? But nobody has ever told you your life is looking better and best today. You're always looking nice. 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 Oh, Fashashi, nice. Oh, who is your tailor? Nice. When you see so many women, where do you buy your makeup? That is your discussion. Who is doing this fashion work for you? That is your discussion. 
Who is making this? Oh, I like this, your bid. Who made it for you? That's their discussion. But they will never ask, what value have you added to yourself? Value is more than material thing that you put on. I'm going somewhere. And I pray God is taking us there. Can somebody shout hallelujah. Never jump into conclusion of the issue of life in order for you not to be, become the crisis of life. When you jump into the conclusion of life thinking that I know it. I've said to you about a particular man. I know it's man that came many years ago to our church to call after the service. And he came for counseling. If I say this, I know it. I say this, I know it. I will say this, I know it. This one, I know it. I say, oh God, why are you here? I tell you this, you know it. I tell you this, this one, you know it. I say, come when you don't know it. And he left. I say, let other people come into the office. I want people that want to hear. Then second Sunday he came, or two Sundays after, and they said, I don't know anything. If you sit before a man you want to gain from, and you know everything that man wants to tell you, why are you there? If the woman of the issue of blood understand how she can receive a healing without Jesus' interference, then she wouldn't know, she wouldn't know have gone to Jesus. Luke chapter 14, verse 28 to 30, talk something about people of I know it. Say, for which of you, say, for which of you, Hallelujah. Now that scripture says, For which of you intend to build a tower, seated not down false, and counted the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it? Verse 29. Lives happily after he had laid the foundation, and is not able to finish it. How that behold it began to mock him, saying, This man began to build and not able to finish. So a lot of people I want to start business. At the end, before the closing of that year, the business will collapse. Because of what? They just want to start. They don't count the cost. I've been talking to people about Hallelujah. I've been talking to people about the administrative and the technical aspect of life. And I want every one of us to learn this. To a lot of people, their mind is just about, can you ask somebody beside you, say, what is your focus? Ask the, that person, say, what is your focus? Ask that person, say, what is your focus? Tell that person, say, what is your focus? Okay, tell like 10 persons, what is your focus? Amen. Praise the Lord. So, you have to understand that your focus must stand on a particular platform that is supposed to be. And I pray for you today, when you start a thing, you must count the cost. Maybe I'll be able to finish it or I cannot finish it. You have to understand what you are doing, what do I want to, or what do I want to get in that. If you must succeed in life, you must surround yourself with successful people with this. You will soon be like people you flock with. So you must be international about your interpersonal relationship. You must be what? About what? You must not be local. When a era where we don't do things the way it used to be, 1822. There are lots of people with the mindset of 1978 in this era. This is the way I know it to be. Hello, if we don't change that way, they will 
will sideline you somewhere and you never get to a place. This is I, exactly, this is the way it was when we are growing up. That was then. There can never be a better yesterday. Any man that is saying yesterday was better is a finished man. Somebody that is not there yet. I was rich. Ah, the day of riches when I used to be rich. Hello, that is a sad news. When I used to be rich. When I used to be this. When I used to be great. But what has happened to you now? Who has bewitched you? Glory be to the name of the Lord. Now, creative thinkers don't read your lips. They read your mind. To a lot of people, what they see is the lips of people. When you are lying to me, I can tell you you are lying, but I will not tell you. When you begin to oppress people with the word that comes out of their mind, of their mouth, hello, those people you are praised will finish you. You have to understand the word that is coming out from their mind. So positive thinkers don't evaluate lips, they evaluate mind. They might not give you the money you need from them, but the memory that will last in you forever. Some people, what you need from them is not money. What you need from them is do it this way. And you do it that way, it works. Crafty thinkers talk less, but act more. There is no one that will inherit two things together. You will inherit talkativeness, and you will inherit action. It cannot work. One must stop for one. As a matter of fact, anyone with a great measure of great things in mind will not be talking too much. Number five, they believe that long grace don't require speed. What did I say? They require determination and finishing power. Long grace is not by speedy. When you start a long grace, you have to be going gradually and begin to map, in, map it in your mind. But a lot of people when they say, on your mouth, get ready, go! They pick grace. They have used all their energy at a certain point. And by the time they get to the center, that is all. You have to understand that when you want to run a particular race, you have to sit down and think. You don't meet that race at the center. Start from the beginning so you understand the application to it. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1b, Hebrews 12 verse 1b says, And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Patience. So some people when you say, this opportunity has come. Oh! Opportunity. Oh yeah, what are we going to do now? Hey, you don't, they don't see it. You have to sit down and count the cost. You don't grab it immediately. Some people, by the time they grab it, they begin to make a lot of blunders. Ear yeah, blunders. Ear yeah, blunders. Ear yeah, blunders. Ear yeah, blunders. And when they get to a finishing line, they begin to look, oh, they are failure. So if I pray for you that God will eradicate the mindset of failure, I think you're supposed to say amen. Mouth and mind of creative thinkers is not far from each other. Because what they think is what they speak and act. As they are thinking it, they are acting it. As they are acting it, they are making it work. Your two riches come when you are faithful in the mind of successor. Meaning that when you are fame, what? Fool. People that follow you, they are saying, if it is not you, they will not become who they are. That is what the word I tag here, fame, fool. Fame, what? Fool. Fame, fool. We have a lot of famous people in Nigeria now. If they, don't miss, if they don't miss it or mess up in the area of marriage, they will miss it or mess up in any area. But when you are faithful, you are complete. The word of the Lord says, we are completing in, we are completing him, 
He that is the head of principalities and what? A power. When you are faithful, somebody must count on you. You must not live your life like the life of poor thinkers. Because I said here that poor thinkers are like a dead sea. When you discover, I'm going to break down the meaning of dead sea for us here. When you look at the story of the dead sea, it was linked to a disobedient woman. Dead sea linked to what? A disobedient woman. The wife of Lot. When the Lord spoke to the husband, or to the man, to the husband, this is what is going to happen. We have to pack our load and go. The wife see up target based on the beautiful things in a place that will soon be destroyed. And the word of the Lord says that she looked back. And what happened to her? When she looked back, she turned to what? The pillar of salt. People that have gone to that place said the whole land were filled with pillar. Not only that spot. So that particular place happened to be a desert those days. Okay? It was a desert and there are a particular stream, a particular ocean that flows into that desert and made the Dead Sea and that place static. Because of what? Of that disobedient woman. So that place remains static as it is. This is the reason of so many people life. Good things flows into their life but doesn't flow out. Opportunity comes into their life but they don't get it right. Poor thinkers are like Dead Sea that everything floats on it but it didn't flow out. It's accommodate things that flows in and damage them. Anything that goes into that Dead Sea will be damaged. Though a lot of people are using Dead Sea now for, to cure skin disease. They use it for so many things. As a matter of fact, according to, 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 the, to, the, to the history about the Dead Sea, when you dive inside and you put your head down, your head is going to be burnt inside that sea. Every sea you see, they have little content of salt. But the one inside the Dead Sea is so higher, so much, in as much that when you taste it, you'll be tasting bitterness. So the more you go deep into the Dead Sea, the more deeper you begin to have the soul, you might even die without coming down. And as a matter of fact, you have to force yourself to go inside because that sea will float everything that comes on it. I've said it before, you can, you can, you can just relax on the dead sea and begin to read the uh, newspaper because of the quantity of salt. It will float you. It's a floater. So there are lots of people, they don't have something on their inside. Everything that's supposed to be on their inside will float. <laughs> we just float. The principle of river is when something comes in, it must do what? River must swallow it. If fish enter into the dead sea, it will die. Reason people that don't think rightly, anyone that associates with them, anyone that accommodates them, anyone that stands to help them, we have a finishing line. You just finish. So when you have poor thinkers around you that they don't have any other thing than they think wrong way, every time this one offend me, that one do this one to me, this one do this, that one do this, that is their talking. Hello, move away from them. They are your devourer. You don't need to pray for devourer. As a matter of fact, mention their name. If it's Amanta, say Amanta is a devourer, Lord separate us. You don't need to begin to look for scripture of the Bible. The scripture is being fulfilled in the life of that person. Anyone that come around you, they don't have any other thing than to gossip. They don't have any other thing than what are we going to eat in the morning? What are we going to eat in the afternoon? What are we going to eat at night? And that is all they can do for them. For, two, for, for one year, hello, they are devourer. And if you fall into that category, you don't need to live for devourer. You have to begin to say, Lord, spirit of devourer in me, take it away. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I say, glory be to the name of the Lord. Salt in Dead Sea bring bitterness. No water, no water dwelling creature or plant survive in the Red Sea. 
Meaning that Dead Sea is a killer because anything that has life that enters into there will die with it. Dead Sea is like a graveyard. There is no life in it. Those, there is no life in graveyard because of its name. The Egyptians of those days use it, the asphalt of it. They use the asphalt they bring from the Dead Sea to embalm their dead body. So everything about the Dead Sea is about death. Egyptians of those days, they use it to embalm their dead bodies. They will just remove the asphalt. That is the salt there. You cannot see any more there that is not salty. So when they put it on anything, it will make that place remain static. So, when you are with a man with a dead understanding, the life of that man, the life of that woman is capable of killing your brain. Somebody hearing me? Dead sea have no added value. Dead sea is a floater and a stagnated thing. You can sit on it and begin to do anything. You can even eat your first meal square and second meal and everything there. No one drink or bathe from there. They don't cook from the Dead Sea. Nobody do that. If you decide to swim on it and put your head, something will happen. So Dead Sea is cut off from every other sea. This is the way of the poor thinkers. The way it's cut off, the way people that cannot think right, that is the way their life is. Nothing floating to them. No business understanding. No strategic plan. No, strategic plan, no life that you can say this life is mighty. Nothing. Their life will just remain the way it is. The book of John chapter 15 verse 6. He say, He is cut forth as a branch. And is withered. And men gather them and cast them into the fire. And they are burnt. John 15 verse 6. This is the way you see in the life that stands as a dead sea. A dead man. But that is still working. With all this, you can see that Dead Sea cause is a cause sea. Even in the book of Ezekiel chapter 47 verse 8, Ezekiel chapter 47 verse 8, the word of the Lord came to Ezekiel and the Lord is saying, it will come in the last day or a time is going to come that the Dead Sea will be revived again, meaning that the Dead Sea is caused. Any man or woman that associates with the wife of Lot, that same person is a dead person, is a cursed person. As she looked back, oh, the beautiful house in that place, oh, everything to a soon destroy city. And what happened? She was cursed. I pray in the name of Jesus, every curse in you, God take it off. In the name of Jesus Christ, every poor thinker is are, are, are lazy. And the Bible called them slug, sluggish person. He addressed them to them as sluggard. Call them sluggish person. If we impart of them, it does not seek to their brain. Any investment you have on such people will never stay. Give them money, they will waste that money. Give them land, they will sell the land. Give them children, they will send the children to another person to take care of them for him or her. Give them anything, it will never stay in their hand. Give them better mind. The better mind will never retain in them. That is just that. They only claim prophecy for people that are around them to, 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 to activate it or to make use of it. Every poor thinker's talk, their mouth is faster than their mind. I've said it before. Their mouth is what? So fast. Oh, this one, yes. Oh, that one, <laughs> that one, yes. They are always at the point of yes, people. But they never move. How many opportunities have you grabbed and you dropped? They want to do this business. After this business, this business. After this business, this business. I've said this before. If you don't succeed in one business, don't go to other one. A lot of people want to bring every business together. They want to sell pepper, sell onion, sell cosmetic stock. They want to go into oil. They want to go into this. They want to sell clothes. They want to sell bag. They want to teach in school. They want to do everything. When you look at them, they will not look one girl like this. They want to do everything, but they cannot do all things. They cannot even point at one. When you ask some people, what are you doing? What am I doing? 
I do this. What am I doing? I do this. What am I doing? I do this. What are you doing? The first thing that should come out of your mouth is your priority. What is the principal work you are doing? If anybody comes to me right now, hello, what are you doing? I'm a pastor. What am I doing again? I'm a what? What am I doing to you now? I'm motivating you. You can also call me a motivational speaker, but I'm not one. Is somebody hearing me? The Lord said to me, go and pastor. That is the priority. So when other things come to stress recon, then you can now say, and this one. I think, and this one. But the major thing that people must know you with must stand. Then my question to everyone, open your eyes and open your mind. Because I've discovered in this study that a lot of people will open their mind, but their mind is closed. Tell somebody beside you, say, open your eyes and don't close your mind. Glory be to the name of the Lord. So my question to you now is, what are you doing? What is your business? What is your profession? Can you close your eyes and answer that question? Close your eyes now. What is your profession? Open your eyes. The Lord is saying to me that a lot of people, their answer is, I don't even know. I don't even do what? So some people also, they are thinking of their profession to get it tomorrow at age 50. They want to start their profession tomorrow. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 6 verse 6 says, Proverbs chapter 6 verse 6 says, Go to the hand, thou sluggard, consider our ways and be wise. Go to the hand, a particular king, Forget to take lecture from every man. I started taking lecture. The hand turned to his lecturer. I was looking at the hands. The way they are going. And the word of the Lord said, Go to the hand. Old slugger, lazy person. Sluggish minded person. Go to the hand. Go and see their way. You are doing a business. And that is, you are working with somebody. Don't let me say you are doing a business. You are working under somebody. And you have been there for many years. And in that place, you still borrow clothes to wear and shoes to wear. So he will tell you, who will not tell you that you are a sluggard? You have been working for one year or two years. You are still borrowing wears and shoes. Ah! I reject that thing. Can you say it now? If you don't hear it here, you might not hear it as well. The word of the Lord is for every season. Verse 7 of that scripture, verse 7 says, Which have no guide, they don't have guide, they don't have overseer or ruler, go ahead, verse 8, provided a meat for the summer and gathered a food in the harvest. They keep it to the hand. Say, go to the hand, go and learn from them. A lot of people want to have millions before they get wedded. I want to have millions. Who tell you, say, now money, then they take money. Now wisdom. Do you hear me? Now waiting? No be money. Some people want to enter into the marriage because I want to compensate people. Ah, I've been attending my friend's wedding. This one will be greater. Yes, they begin to look for money. 20 million, 10 million. And here this, the love of that marriage disappeared right from reception. How people begin to, oh, that marriage was superb. Talk of time. But six months after, from the day of the wedding, because you overspray yourself, you don't get drunk. And the friends that your wife ate, are the one that you are now sending everywhere. You will just pam, pam like this. Jude. So you want to tell me that Uluka is the person that is serving on this grant? No, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. 
Ha, this is that alone. That's me. The woman doesn't the woman don't forget things easily. No be so. They will still keep it to the bed. Jude, you never answer me for that question I asked you at the reception ground. Jude, I'm asking you, no, now it's our honeymoon day. Yes, it's honeymoon. You will just discover the honeymoon finished that night. So marriage is not about the money you spent. It's about how you are able to guide your mind in it. A marriage is not meant for boys. It's for men. There are some boys in marriage that their age is like 50 something years. They are still boys. As a matter of fact, they have timid and teenager mind. Teenagers what? Not even the mind of the youth. Their mind is under 17 mind. Whenever issue happen in their marriage, they begin to call their sister, their brother, their uncle, their this, their dad. Don't you know what my husband do or what my wife do to me? You are a teenager. You are not so, hey, it's a mistake that you enter into marriage. If you still fall into that category, hey, step up. Can everybody shout out and say, step up. step up. You are not talking to anybody, but you are talking to somebody. Say, step up. Step up. And if you are also talking to yourself, say, step up. If you are not saying it, you are a suspect. Say, step up. Step up. Yes, one does is suspect in the house. Anyone that is not shouting, step up, let everybody hear. You are a suspect. That you will not hear the voice of somebody beside you. Say, step up. Step up. Even the single are saying it. Can you see? Mature single. God is dealing with mature single. Amen. They are going to marry soon. As I'm running uh, a certificate from school. Your certificate of credibility. That is your personal lively credibility. To be creative is a natural and inborn certification or certification. A natural ability to do things better than what your certificate can offer you. That is creative thinking. That you don't have the ability to attend higher institution does not define you as a failure. Your physical offense certificate is to clarify you as a professional of a particular field of study. Do you have a witness in the house? But that does not mean when you have opportunity to go to school, you must stop. School also adds value to people. No matter how much you know the anointed man of God or the CEO of a company, if your spiritual attitude and your mental reasoning, you cannot encounter any other things that are the opposite of what is expected of you. I know the anointed men of God are for me fire. I know the CEO of that company. If your mental picture is poor, you will never get to them. As a matter of fact, you might be under them for so many years and nothing is working. And people will just come, they will grab it. They will do what? They will give employment to people they don't know. When their younger brother, immediate younger brother is unemployment. Unemployed person. But the CEO of that company is giving employment to people because of what over familiarity has made the younger brother to miss it. The money of your elder brother is not your money. Is somebody listening to me? As a matter of fact, the money of your parents is not for you. It's for her. Then who is her? It's for them. So you need to understand that you generate the value that is going to make you valuable in the journey of life. I pray that God will bless us in the name of Jesus. I say God will bless us in the name of Jesus. Thank God for education, but the true map and guide to success is first located in your mind, in how you do things. Because the true picture of what you're about to do is not in what you are doing or what you're about to do. Let me repeat. The true picture in what you're about to do is not what you're about to do, it's in you. What you're about to do is something you want to do, but not you that plan it. 
This is the reason you will wake up in a day because you want to build a house. You have to go to the sand or go to cement. I want to make use of you and you pay for the usage. Is it not true? You go to a land, I want to make use of you, you and you do what? You pay for the usage. So the true picture is not in that thing. It's in you. How you want to fashion your building is the way you want to fashion it, not the way the land wanted it to be. Glory be to the name of the Lord. So we need to wake up to our slumbering state of life and something will happen in us in the name of Jesus Christ. Can somebody shout amen? amen. Can somebody shout amen? amen? I pray that God will help us in Jesus' name. Everyone, anywhere you are, you have heard something this morning. You have learned something. I want you to begin to lay claim on your mindset. Tell God the Lord, I challenge my mind. I challenge my reasoning. I challenge myself today. Lord, please help me to become what you want me to become. I have seen my true picture here. That I'm not capable of becoming what you have seen in me. Your deposit in me is not really giving me the best I need because I'm not making use of it. I don't want you to pray, die by fire prayer or die by thunder. I want you to pray challenging prayer. This is the best the Lord wants from you. This is the way your mind must be. Begin to declare the word, Lord, change my mind. I reconfigure my mindset to you. I give you my heart today. Speak through me, walk through me, walk from me, walk for me in the name of Jesus. Start saying it to God today, he's ready to hear you. Thank you, Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name we pray. Can we point our finger to the heavens? I pray for grace, for divine idea. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for grace, for total grace. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for grace. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for grace. That will make us to become what God wants us to be. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Go in the power of grace. No more a failure. So shall it be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 In Jesus' name. Glory. Are you in the house you want to give your life to Christ? You have not given your totality to him and you are saying, Lord, I wish I want to give my life to you today. I want you to touch me in everything I do.